My beloved brothers and sisters, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that we should all fear. And the truth is, every time a calamity strikes, every time something happens, it's only natural for us to ask ourselves, is this the punishment of Allah? You see dark clouds. Allah has sent dark clouds in the past to nations to destroy them. So it is only a good question to ask yourself, are these dark clouds coming to me as a punishment or are they coming to us as a rahma and a mercy of Allah? Or is it actually going to come with destruction, but not a punishment, a test? So these are three things we need to understand. How do we look at this? Now, the only answer can be from revelation. I cannot come up with an answer from my pocket, nor can you. So I have to turn the pages of the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And I have to look at what Allah says about the punishment and the mercy of Allah. Because those are two that are qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is something Allah has promised so let's take a look at Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 156, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about adab. Allah says, قَالَ عَذَابِي أُصِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ He says, it is my punishment and I will inflict it on whomsoever I wish. Now that verse brings about a lot of fear because Allah says, my punishment, I will inflict it on whomsoever I wish, but now we have something else that Allah says to us that I will never punish a person unless he or she deserves the punishment. Subhanallah. So I need to know Allah's not going to punish me unless I deserve the punishment. And if I deserve the punishment, Allah says, still I may forgive you and I may just wipe out your sins by my mercy, even though you had deserved to be punished. Subhanallah. So let's understand Allah is not going to punish an innocent person. Do you know why? He is just. If you want to be saved from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to seek the forgiveness of Allah every day. You need to be in the company of good people. Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them for as long as you are in their midst. Notice how I said you must have good company. It will bring about the mercy of Allah. Your friends must be better than you. Your friends must have language with no Fs and Bs. Subhanallah. Your friends must speak the truth. They must be upright individuals. They must remind you of Allah. You'll never regret that. The minute your circle is dirty, you may deserve the punishment of Allah. When your circle is clean, Wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters, sometimes Allah does not punish us because of one man in our community whom he loves. Evidence of it is this verse. This verse. Allah says, you know what? How can we punish them when you are there? You are right in their midst. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us the love of one another. You never know who is the wali of Allah. You never know who is the friend of Allah. Secondly, we will never punish them while they are seeking the forgiveness of ours. While they are seeking the forgiveness of Allah. That means if I want to divert or avert punishment that is coming in my direction. First thing I need to do, seek the forgiveness of Allah. The problem with man is man says people are bad. That's why Allah is punishing them. But he doesn't look at himself being bad. You see, we point fingers at others. That man is like this. This woman is like that. That one is committing that. This one is committing. What about you and I? <laughs> Allah won't change the condition of a community or a nation until and unless every individual changes his own condition. May Allah help us change our condition.